Thank you. Amen. I love you. Thank you. Be seated. Amen. No words. Just gratitude. Hallelujah. Um, I think I'm going to do my podcast on it this week, but there's no place that you can be, no matter how lost you feel, that God hasn't already been there, and he knows where you are. Hallelujah. David said, though I make my bed in hell, the Lord's already been there. Hallelujah. Though I take the wings of a bird and ascend to heaven, thou art there. Uh, last week, if you remember, um, God declared this last week, Miracle Week, and he said, you know, within 24 hours he would confirm it. And uh, we've been in a standstill um, with our building, even though a good percentage of it's done. And um, for lack of finance, we had exhausted all of the money that we had. And we had applied for a loan, and it's just drug on and drug on. And um, last Monday, within 24 hours, we got the call that we got our loan. <clears throat> Amen. And so we're back in business. Hallelujah. I need a, I need a Kleenex. Y'all make me cry. Um, thank you. Uh, but we got our loan. And um, our objective, our goal, and it's, it looks like it's really possible, but um, late spring we'll, we'll, we'll be in that building. And so uh, there are so many people that are responsible for helping navigate uh, this journey in uh, in time, we want to honor them, but I want to thank the Lord, hallelujah, that, that we're all going home. Amen. We've never had our own home. Amen. We're, we're going home, and uh, y'all have been uh, through the thick and the thin, and um, we're grateful to Cornerstone for allowing us to grow in their facility. But there's just nothing like being in your own building and, uh, you know, you don't have time restraints or date restraints. <clears throat> you can just do what you want. And so um, I believe that today <clears throat> uh, God released something to everyone who watched online. The, you don't realize it, but what's in the building is such a small percentage of who Regeneration Nashville is. We literally, <clears throat> we have thousands and thousands of online members, and we touch the world. And I believe that <clears throat> we are a core where God today began to just release the Spirit of God into homes and people's lives. And the Lord is <clears throat> doing amazing things. And so... Uh, I want to take our text from two very familiar verses. This is out of Isaiah chapter 9. And uh, I want to read um, two verses. Most of you probably could quote this. Verse 6 of Isaiah 9. For unto us a child is born... Unto us a son is given. This is speaking of Jesus, we know. And the government, hallelujah, shall be upon his shoulder. The government shall be upon his shoulder. And when people speak of his government, they're going to say, wonderful. When's the last time you did that? Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. That means that there are no term limits on Jesus. You didn't vote him in, and you're not voting him out. 
Hallelujah. He doesn't answer to a board or to a Congress or to a quorum of world leaders. He's the everlasting Father. And in his kingdom, he's the prince, not of chaos, but of peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment, with justice. There's a word that's been forgotten in this day and age. From henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts <clears throat> will perform this. Hallelujah. Selah. Hallelujah. God bless you. You can be seated. Every nation in the earth has a government. If a nation did not have a government, there would just be absolute anarchy and chaos. Government is meant to establish a rule of law by which men can cohabitate, cohabitate together in peace and in harmony and achieve purpose and prosperity in their lives. And so the Lord begins to speak here in Isaiah's prophesying. He said, there's coming a day when there's going to be a child born and a son born unto you. And the government of God is going to be put on his shoulders. That up until that point, there didn't seem to be a real government that was in the earth that was spiritual, but the Father said, I'm sending a ruler to the earth. You call him everlasting Father. You call him the Prince of Peace. You call him the Mighty God. But he said, heaven is going to take the government of heaven, and he's going to place it on the shoulders of Jesus Christ. And in his reign, the government of the earth shall then be upon him. Hebrews says that Jesus Christ is our high priest. Going back to Exodus and Leviticus, when the dress and the priestly robes were made for Aaron, what was on his shoulders was called the ephod. And on each side of the shoulders in the ephod, there was an onyx stone, two stones that rested on the shoulders. And each stone had six tribes of the nation of Israel engraved on those stones. So when the high priest went into the holiest of holies, into the presence of God, he was carrying on his shoulders the welfare, the remembrance of the entire nation of Israel that when the high priest went in, hallelujah, to the presence of the Almighty by proxy, Judah and Issachar and Naphtali, hallelujah, and Gad begin to march into the divine presence of the Lord. Can I tell you today from the birth of Jesus Christ until now there is only one government in the world that God Almighty recognizes 
and it's the government of the almighty Jesus Christ. And Jesus still rules in the earth. This is why the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth, hallelujah, is his foot through and heaven is his throne room. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. Can I tell you, the government of God is on the shoulders of Jesus Christ and you cannot vote him out. You cannot remove him. You cannot impeach him because God put him in place. The amazing thing about these two verses, because every prime minister, every king, really not so much with kings, but in our sphere of rule in the earth today, prime ministers, presidents, whatever, they have terms. They can only rule for so long. Some because of death end, some because of sickness, some are impeached, some just simply fulfill the legislative rule of how long a man can rule over a nation. But in Isaiah 9 and 7, when it's speaking of the government of Jesus Christ, he said, and there shall be no end, the increase of his government, there shall be no end. What we are living in right now is a cancel culture. Everything that's right is being canceled. Christians are canceled. If you don't believe in abortion, you're canceled. If you don't believe in the gay lifestyle, you're canceled. The list just goes on and on and on. But I can tell you this. Right now, the world is trying to cancel Jesus Christ. And they're not going to do it. Because I, I stake my ministry on this. This coup by hell. I'm saying that in the spirit realm... There has been a coup by hell to remove and to impeach Jesus Christ's government that rules over the earth. Whether it's Nigeria or Belize or India or Russia or Georgia or any other nation, Honduras, Mexico, the United States, England, there has been a purposely put forth purpose to remove the government of God. But I'm telling you that the word says that the increase, in fact, it doesn't matter how weak it looks. God said every decade, every year that his government is going to increase. So, so while it looks like the enemy's taking territory in the spirit realm, hallelujah, the government of God is beginning to bleed over the borders of hell now, beginning to bleed over the borders of sin now, and the government of the Lord now, is beginning to cover that's why it said now, that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord now, shall cover the earth now, as the waters cover the sea now. hold on now. it's just getting where now. it's just getting going now. the glory now, the majesty now, the power now, of God now, is increasing now, in the earth Governments have different arms, but no government can function without a court system that has justice and equity. Unfortunately, in the day that we live in, we have a court system that pretty much rewards the criminal and punishes the good person. You can pay 
$10,000 and study for eight years to get into the United States legally, or you can go down to some other country and just cross over, get a driver's license, health insurance, welfare, voting rights, because that court system's broke. In the United States of America, we have different levels of courts. Eventually, the Supreme Court can cancel out any other rendering and any decision made by any lower court. I think it's 11 men that sit, and when they come to a consensus, there is no higher court to appeal to because the Supreme Court makes the final decision. We live in a time in which the highest court in the nation, by and large, has not supported spiritual laws. Thank God that the Supreme Court backed up and did away with Roe versus Wade. Yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> This is why there is such a war when a Supreme Court justice has to be appointed because the liberals and the conservatives go to battle to try to make sure that they have the deciding vote on whichever side of the paradigm that they live in. And whenever the enemy is at work, that Jezebel spirit will begin to come against it. I'll give you an example. You remember when Kavanaugh was going to be ratified as the Supreme Court Justice, and we watched displayed over the weeks this horrendous attack and slander and lie that tried to vilify this man as some sexual deviant predator until it reduced him to tears and shake in front of the camera because of the attack of that Jezebel spirit. What was it doing? It was intimidating until when he was appointed, he could not make right decisions because that spirit and so got a hold of him he was afraid to be controversial but can I tell you that Jesus Christ will never be intimidated hallelujah the old saying is I brought you into the world and I can take you out can I tell you that God Almighty is still in control and the increase of his government shall have no end this is where this message began to come up in my spirit because I heard the Lord say, I'm getting ready to drop the gavel in the court of heaven. When you go back, I'll give you a reference for this. When you go back to the scriptures, Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 and 10 reference it. There are other places. But he references, he said, I saw the ancient of days come and sit down in the court of heaven. Who is that? That's God Almighty. And there has been so much inequity and injustice that has been ratified by illegal things in the earth. Not just in our nation, but can I tell you that there is another court that is getting ready to render a verdict. And we wonder how are things going to change and how are things going to turn around because God hears the prayers of the saints. And if the increase of his government, there shall be no end. And the government rests on the shoulders of Jesus Christ. Uh, the scripture says uh, that you and I have an advocate uh, or a lawyer named Jesus. Hallelujah. Whoever maketh intercession for the saints. Uh, and while all of this mess has been going on, Jesus has been standing uh, in the supreme court of heaven before the ancient of days. Uh, and he has been 
been interceding for our nation, interceding for your children, interceding for your future, interceding for your health. And the ancient of days has heard the final argument made by Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And the ancient of days is getting ready to drop the gavel in the spirit. And he's going to render a verdict. And when he does, all of hell is going to be shaken. This ain't over by a long shot. Hallelujah. God, in a moment, every one of us, our breath today that we breathe is in the hands of God. God, in any moment, could just do this, and you stop breathing. I think of how we exist and we live simply because of the mercy of the Lord. It's the mercy of God that when we drive on the freeway, somebody doesn't come across the lanes that had a heart attack or got or was drunk and hits his head on. Our peace rests in the divine protection of Jesus Christ. Heaven is rendering, I can see it in the spirit, there is a rendering prophetically that is being loosed in the earth. And God is going to supersede what the laws of the land have declared. I, I think it's in Daniel, but it says this, there will come a day when they will seek to change the times and the seasons. Man can't make spring and winter change places. I don't care when you plant that fruit tree, it's only going to flourish in a certain season. And what man, the enemy has tried to do is change the mechanics of creation. This is why you're seeing the sexual identity situation. And, and it's been reduced now to the very <clears throat> biomechanics of how men exist in the earth. <clears throat> in that setting, the Lord said they will try to change times and seasons. But you cannot change what heaven has already set in place. He said this. I think it was somewhere around, speaking of Noah, but he said, there will always be winter, summer, spring, and fall. You cannot do away with that. This is one of the strongest arguments against climate change is because God said there will always be winter, there will always be summer, there will always be spring, and there will always be fall. You cannot change the structure of creation and the government of God. What the enemy has forgotten is that at Calvary, he was evicted as the ruler and the prince and the power of the air. So he has no legal authority to do anything. When Jesus came out of the grave, he said, all power and all authority has been given unto me. So God decides what's right. God decides what's wrong. The Bible said God lifts up one man and he pulls down another. And by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, there is a removing, saith the Lord, get ready to take place in the atmosphere in this nation. And God said the government of the Lord is getting ready to be exalted in the atmosphere. You're, there is no one, the devil doesn't have an appeal process. Hallelujah. In fact, according to the scriptures, everything about God's authority is going to increase. We, we look at it through natural eyes and we feel like it's abating. It's deteriorating. Ephesians 1 says, talks about, and the exceeding greatness 
of his power. That is exceeding. Hallelujah. It's ever increasing. We will see the culmination of that pretty soon in the millennial reign. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But the government of God is not dying. Jesus has not abdicated his throne in the earth. It doesn't matter who's ruling in the White House. Jesus still walks the halls of the White House. And at any moment, he can just say, that's enough of that. And this is what's going to happen now. And he can change the hearts of society. Another arm of a government besides a court system is there has to be an army. If you don't have an army, you can't back up what you want to enforce. I don't drive 70 when it says 70 because the sign says 70. I'm afraid if I come around the corner, there's going to be a state trooper sitting on his shoulder running radar. Hey, well, Pastor, well, I never was born to drive slow. <laughs> but I obey the speed limit most of the time. <laughs> because there is something in place to enforce it. America has been the most feared nation up until recently was in Donald Trump's reign. Countries, I remember when, you might remember this, some of you are younger, wouldn't, but uh, I think it was in Iran, they, they captured 200 and some American citizens. And I believe they held them for over a year. And the sitting president, who was a Democrat, had tried to negotiate, but he never would tell them an ultimatum, if you don't let him go, we're going to come after you. When Ronald Reagan was voted in for president, the day he took office is the day without ever firing a shot, Iran let our U.S. citizens go because they realized we're dealing with somebody that has the ability and will back it up with force, and they were afraid of our nation. <clears throat> Could it be the devil has ran havoc in the church because we lost our authority to enforce the powers of God? Well, devil, I'm telling you, you just better get out of here. And the devil looking at it, laughing and thinking, you don't have any show, any power, any authority. But I can tell you this, when I come after a devil, I don't come after him in the name of Kent Christmas. I come after him out of the increase of the government of God. Now, there is not a devil in hell that intimidates me because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And God said, I'm giving you my my authority that whatever you bind, I'll bind. Whatever you lose, I'll lose. You need to rise up in the spirit of the Lord and say you are dealing with somebody that has power. With our nation, our army is a natural army. And in reality... The church is not the ultimate army of God. Paul talks about, he says, you know, a good soldier entangleth him not with the affairs of this world. And Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. We are involved in the things of the Lord. But if all God had was the existing church in the earth right now, he might be stretched. But God is going to fulfill his word because the government of God that's in the earth has an army. 
and its angels. <clears throat> Jesus is referred to in the King James and or in the old the God is in the Old and New Testament 245 times as Lord of hosts. The word host means army, battle, warfare, soldiers, and war. So God has <clears throat> an army on call that the Lord is getting ready to deploy in the earth. And when this army is loosed by God in the earth, wickedness is going to begin to be defeated rapidly by the power of the Lord. One, one a few places call him the Lord of Saboth. The word Saboth means heavenly armies. <clears throat> One angel in the Old Testament killed 185,000 enemy soldiers of Israel without any repercussion. One angel did that. Jesus at the cross said, if I wanted to, I could call for the Lord to send legions of angels one legion was 6,000. Twelve would have been 72,000 angels that were standing on the edge of heaven just wanting to get down there, just waiting for the Lord to say. But, he, but the Jesus was saying, I have not yet been released to the government rule of this earth, but you let me come out of the grave, and on the third day I will be commander of the armies of the angels of the Lord. <clears throat> Say, Pastor, how's God going to fix this? I believe it's Revelations chapter 20, first three verses, said there's going to come a moment when it looks like the enemy has won and it looks like that God's government is defeated. And the Lord is going to loose one angel to the earth. One angel. And you know he's going after not demons, but Satan. The church has been so intimidated by Satan. We're, we just, we've made him bigger than life. But one verse, I believe in Isaiah said, there will come a day when you and I will behold him and we will say, nah, that can't be him. Is this him who made the nations to tremble? And he's just a man. He's not almighty. He's not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at once like Jesus. And with all the hell that he has wrecked in havoc in the earth, the Bible said one angel, not God, but one angel is going to come down and he's going to have a great chain. I can't prove this, but I, I believe that every time somebody gets saved, and they've been delivered from the chain of alcohol and drugs and pornography and anger and unforgiveness. That God, hallelujah, takes that chain that the devil had you bound with and he just adds it on to another chain that he's got up in glory that he's building uh, until one day uh, he's going to look at the angels and say, pick it up and go ahead. Uh, and the angel's going to pick up that great chain. Uh, he's going to march down into the earth uh, and he's coming for a physical Satan. And the Bible says uh, that the devil will be bound for a thousand years by the army of the Lord. Say, why a thousand years? Well, we know that 
from the time of creation till time is no more, God has allotted 7,000 years. We're in the sixth day or the 6,000 year period of time. But God already said, I don't work on the Sabbath. So, I'll give you an example. Israel is the apple of God's eye, natural Israel. Even right now with, with so much of being agnostic or atheistic, and even there's even persecution against Christianity in Israel right now. But they are God's people, and it's God's land. And God said, this is where I'm going to live for a thousand years on the ultimate Sabbath. The thousand years of peace. Why will it be a thousand years of peace? Because the individual who creates chaos will be bound with a chain in hell. So that means that there will be anarchy amongst demons because there will be no commander-in-chief to give them assignments. There will be nobody to marshal them and so they will be inactive in that time. And for 1,000 years, Jesus will rule in the earth on the final Sabbath. Hallelujah. In 1967, Egypt attacked Israel. Some of the neighboring countries marshaled with them. Israel was outmatched. Their military did not seemed to have the capabilities to deal with what was coming against them. But God had already prophetically declared that Israel is mine, and I don't work on the Sabbath day. So you know what we call it? The six-day war. Because God said it ain't going seven days because it's a Sabbath, and on the seventh day, hallelujah, there was peace in the land of Israel. I hear God saying that we're getting ready to enter into a spiritual Sabbath, says the Lord. There is a spiritual rest getting ready to hit the body of Christ because God said, my people and I don't work in the seventh day, but we rest. Hallelujah. And so the Lord is going to loose an angelic army into the earth. And Psalms 91 says, a thousand of the wicked will fall on one hand and 10,000 will fall on the other hand. You shall see the reward of the wicked, but it will not come nigh unto thy dwelling. God said, I'm going to make the wicked turn on each other while they devour each other. I'm going to make them destroy each other. They will tell each other secrets. They will betray each other, says the Lord, because there is an increase of the government of God that is being released in the atmosphere in the earth. The church at the end, hallelujah. Bible talks about a seven-year period, three and a half years of tribulation and three and a half years of the wrath of God, seven-year period. There's lots of debate theologically on everybody uses the same verses. Somebody says we're going up before the rapture. Somebody says we're going up mid-tribulation. Some say that we're going up at the end, and we're going to go through the wrath of God. That didn't make any sense to me. <clears throat> I think that there is a remnant in the earth right now that has been through their tribulation. We've, we've paid the price. I mean, there's many of you that have the same story that I have. Life has not been easy. Serving God requires commitment. You know, not all of us were just living haphazardly. I told my wife, I said, there's a term called, uh, if you've ever heard, it's called Jack Mormons. Anybody ever heard that? Jack Mormons. And what it is, it's non-practicing Mormons. They don't practice Mormonism, but if you ask them what they are, they'll say, I'm Mormon. 
I told my wife, I said, it's amazing how many Jack Christians we have. <clears throat> Say, well, you, I'm a Christian. Oh, wait. You don't read your Bible. You don't go to church at all. You don't have a prayer life. But you're a Christian. It doesn't work like that. There is a remnant that has qualified. You go back to the parable, the ten virgins. They're all virgins. Only five of them made it. Because they rested with a reserve of oil. They took the time to accumulate extra oil to be ready when the bridegroom came. When I believe that we're going up before the tribulation. I believe that at any moment the trumpet could sound and the church is leaving. If, if we don't, God will give us the grace to go through it. But I just can't imagine that God would ever take children that he loves and they're sold out and committed and say, you have to endure the wrath of God like all the unbelievers and all the lukewarm. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to match the scriptures. <clears throat> and yet God is sovereign and I'll yield to whatever he wants. But if God raptures the church out before, at the beginning of that seven years, the reason that the Antichrist will be able to set up his government is because for seven years, the government of God will be lifted out of the earth. And God is going to give those who would not make him Lord and Savior, they're going to have to deal with a wicked political system that will be horrendous. And so the Lord is going to take you and I out of here. And for those seven years, hallelujah, I believe that you and I <clears throat> will rule and reign in heaven with the Spirit of God. And at the end of that seven years, the thousand-year millennial reign will be set in place. And God himself, hallelujah, will come. And the devil will be bound a thousand years. And for think about, for 1,000 years, America's only like 240-some years old. The Roman Empire, some of those... A thousand years or two thousand years. Yet Jesus, hallelujah, for the final seven or final thousand years will rule and reign from Jerusalem. And on the earth, hallelujah, there will be no pollution, no devils, no demons, hallelujah. And Jesus Christ will rule and reign because the increase of his government shall be no end. And I promise you uh, that I feel in my spirit that there is a divine intervention getting ready to hit the United States of America because the court of heaven, the supreme court of God uh, has dropped the gap over this inequity and this injustice that's gone been, been per perpetrated and the Lord is going to say uh, for the harvest to take place uh, there has to be a season of rest and peace within this nation uh, and the Lord says hallelujah America is mine saith the Lord uh, I birthed her uh, to be an evangelist to the nations uh, and there is one final message going to come out of her says the Lord uh, and it is that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. No wonder God is up to something by the Spirit of the Lord. If we are close... I don't, I don't watch the news at all. I quit watching it at the election of 2020. Quit watching Fox because <clears throat> they caved in. And here's what happens. This is why I hate the Internet. 
is because there's so much lie that is spewed out that unless you are super strong spiritually, that stuff will bleed into you. And it will begin to weaken your faith level. And then you begin to realize, I'm thinking, why am I struggling? It's because you are listening to stuff that is meant to destroy your faith level. And so as the Spirit of God <clears throat> begins to move in this hour, we're hearing, so, uh, Jasmine had told my wife a couple of things uh, that the Supreme Court just recently is ruling on about uh, whether President Trump can be on the ballot in some stations and some states and different things. But <clears throat> we're seeing where s certain minority segments all of a sudden are changing their loyalty to more of a, a Republican view than a Democrat view. What is that? It's just that God is doing something in the atmosphere by the Spirit of the Lord. You are on the ground floor of one of the greatest moves of God that man will ever see. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I still declare that God is releasing the finances over this house, that we will never be under a burden of a loan, that God is going to send people in. We're going to write the check to the bank in California, and we're going to get a back a paper that says paid in full, that we're not going to have to do it in segments, but we're going to complete it for the glory of the Lord. The time is short. The time is short. Now, hear me. I see by the Spirit individually, says the Lord, that I have dispatched some angels from the court of heaven to go and reinforce the verdict that I have already rendered over your life. And God said there is a reversal, hallelujah, of what has been pronounced over you. God said I am reversing it, and I'm going to loose the angels of heaven to reinforce and to back up what the Spirit of God has declared for he said, my thoughts towards you are good and not evil. It is the Lord's delight in the prosperity of his servants. I declare this the most blessed church in the United States. I declare, hallelujah, that you are the head and not the tail. That you are the lender and not the borrower. I declare that you have homes paid for. That your businesses prosper. That your bodies are healed in the name of Jesus. My prayer partners to come quickly. I feel an acceleration prophetically in this nation in the spirit. And it's almost like you better put on your seatbelt because it's like a plane taking off. There's such a rapid acceleration in the Holy Ghost that we're going to begin to see things that God is going to implement that are going to you go to bed one night and you wake up in the morning and something will have been taken place that should have not taken place. And God will say, I did that. Hallelujah, I did that. Why don't you stand with me across the building? There's two things I want you to remember from this message today. One of them is this that God's government is going to get stronger, not weaker. It's going to increase and increase and increase, and that means the rule of man is going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. The other thing that I want you to know is that, remember when Jacob had a vision of heaven and the ladder, and he saw angels coming and going. What was taking place there were angels were getting assignments from God the Father, and they were coming to earth and carrying them out. And those that had carried them out were going back up to get more assignments. So he was seeing a constant movement of angelic hosts in the earth. The Lord says, I think it's in Matthew, that at the beginning of the final harvest that God is going to send angels back into the earth. And they're going to begin to remove those who offend and commit iniquity in the land. 
sovereignly, the government of God is releasing, hallelujah, the army of heaven, the Lord of hosts, Saboth, hallelujah. Karabobo Sunday, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In fact, rapidly come and, and, and stand in this front, and if you need a prayer partner, grab one of them. <clears throat> but I'm going to, come on, quickly, because we're going to do something that I think will really benefit you today. How many of you need God to do something supernaturally that unless God does it, you're going to be in trouble? <clears throat> Praise God. Come on, get up close. Because <clears throat> as your pastor, I'm going to release something over you today. Thank the Lord. <clears throat> Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Scripture says that God shall give his angels charge <clears throat> over you. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. So you won't dash your foot against a stone. I believe that every individual has a guardian angel. Some probably work harder than others. I know mine has. I almost died five times from being hit by a bus, breaking my back to falling in a car chipper, being shot with 440 volts of electricity, all kinds.
Thank you.